Hey everyone, thank you for watching our video um, and thank you for subscribing to Casey and the Overlanders. I have a few very loyal subscribers and they have asked for a video on the build of our 1958's Willy's Wagon. So this one is for my very loyal and lovely subscribers. Thank you. We are here in our Minneapolis garage. Uh, behind me is the 1958 Willy's Wagon. Next to me is my lovely husband, Dan, and he's going to show you all of the technical, buildy, geeky, geary stuff of... The geeky, geary stuff. <laughs> the uh, Willys we, Wagon. We've had a few questions about the, uh, about the Willys from our last trip down mm -hmm. to... Uh, the North uh, Rim. Up to the North Rim of the Check Grand Canyon. Check out that video. And so uh, a lot of people responding and wanted to know more about uh, the Overland rig that we took and more about the build. So we're going to talk a little bit about it and... Uh, and then I'm going to go into some details about why I like it and why I think for a family it is a great vehicle too. And I'll go into the details about what's cool about it mechanically, why we did what we did, and sort of the purposes behind all that. All right, let's get started. Yeah, sounds good. But first, let's have some beers. Cheers. Cheers. So, a little bit more about this 1958 Willys Wagon. When I first got this truck, uh, it had uh, a couple of problems that needed to be corrected on it. Now, it was beautiful, vintage, the body and everything was in great shape. Uh, came with the National Park Service emblem still on it. Very cool truck. But drivability-wise, there were some definite issues, right? Uh, this truck had been modified in the past at some point. Somebody had put underneath it a modern front uh, axle. What I didn't know when I bought it, and I did do an inspection uh, when I bought it over the internet and hired an inspector, but what wasn't made apparent to me was that somebody had actually cut the entire frame, the front frame, the front clip, off of the frame and replaced it and grafted a YJ front end onto this truck. What happened was it made it a little bit more drivable and it made it a little more durable in the immediate sense, but they didn't do a great job. They didn't strengthen up the, uh, the frame very well. And uh, this truck has some really crazy binding in the front suspension. So at lock to lock, this truck would actually bind and the wheels would lock up against, against the actual leaf springs. So I brought it down to some awesome friends of mine at Zeus Off-Road, and I, I pulled up in it, and of course everybody thought, wow, this is cool. <laughs> as soon as they got in it and drove it, they knew why I was bringing it to them. Uh, these weird twitches, these inconsistencies and stuff. So I brought it to, again, Zeus, to have them go through the truck and clean up that front end and see what we could do. Well, lo and behold, uh, in trying to do things right, we started looking at as we started to do things like put a new front axle under it, correct the steering, maybe correct the leaf springs, the project kind of snowballed on us. And so we're going to go underneath and I'll kind of show you some of the things that we started to do with. All right, we are now officially underneath the willies. Um, disclaimer, two of our dogs are with us and they may be making <laughs> some cameo appearances or giving us lots of kisses. So go ahead, Dan. All right. Uh, as I kind of mentioned earlier, we soon realized that uh, welding this frame up, uh, the old frame up, wasn't going to work. So we replaced the frame and we started with something that would be uh, reliable, that was more modern, it would be easier for parts and actually stiffer and would provide us with uh, a lot of additional benefits, which we'll get into. This frame is a 2005 uh, Jeep Rubicon two-door, the LJ frame, as they call it. And this frame, the reason we went to it is, it basically has the same wheelbase as our 1958 Willys Wagon did. The wheelbase was within uh, less than a half an inch difference. With, by going to this frame, we were able to put basically all modern parts underneath it. In overlanding, the more custom you get, if something breaks, it's hard to it's hard to get parts on the trail. It's hard to get parts on the road. So by starting with uh, a more modern frame, we were able to do some cool stuff. Now, what you'll notice is 
uh, under here. This is a Dynatrack high pinion, Dynatrack Pro Rock 44 front end. And as you guys can see, for those of you who are geeking out on it, this axle is built chromoly axle shafts. Uh, this is a really awesome axle. Uh, all custom steering linkage, uh, Zeus Off-Road put on here. Uh, we basically, in, in, in sort of doing this front end, we wanted something that was going to be super durable for overlanding and on the trail, yet we could do some hardcore wheeling with it. And that all of our steering components, as you can see, are very beefy so that we eliminate failure. The whole idea of this rig was to how to eliminate failure. Uh, one of the things about it, as you'll notice, is we could have gone, we could have gone stock, right? Everything on this we can get parts replaceable at any, in any town across the United States. However, of course, the way I do things, we kind of went a little, a little crazy with it because while these are not stock parts, these are parts you can buy readily every day. Now, the front suspension is from TNT Customs, and this is their long arm kit. This allows uh, greater wheel travel, greater stability uh, off-road, and actually uh, better drivability and comfort on-road. So we didn't go with the traditional Jeep for arms. We cut those off of the frame, and we did this long arm kit. Uh, Cardi, gonna... Dan, I got some silly questions here. Sure. What's that orange plundry looking thing? <laughs> <laughs> Those are the drive shafts. Uh, those are about the heaviest duty drive shafts you can get for a Dana 44. Okay. They're, um, they they always look a little bit like here. Like a plunger. <laughs> they look my like perspective. a plunger. <laughs> I have yeah. another question. They're, they're, um, I think they're called RSC drive shafts, but I can't recall. Okay. Um, this thing that looks like a horn. Is a horn. That's a horn. <laughs> yeah. So this is the original horn. All right. So it's, we actually had to relocate the horn down there. There's a lot of custom pieces on this. For example, we're running, uh, we're running a, I believe this is a JK steering box. So it's got a really, the steering is well overbuilt for what the needs of this truck are and the weight of this truck. As Lulu's gonna tell you right here. Uh, we had to relocate the horn because as we get underneath the hood, I'll show you some of the cool stuff that we did underneath there. Uh, the spring rate and the springs, we do have a lift in here. I think we got about four inches of lift as it sits right now. <laughs> and uh, we basically had to play with the springs and the spring rate because of the weight of the body. With this 1958, it is all steel and there's a lot of glass. So this body weighs a lot more than a traditional truck from 2005 where the frame was, right? So uh, we had to figure out spring rates and then we did some really cool shocks with it too. All right, cool. Let's go take another view of this truck. So a quick walk around of the truck uh, to discuss sort of the overlanding features and some of the cool stuff on the outside. Then we'll get into the details. We'll get underneath the hood and get underneath the truck. Uh, we're running a Smitty built 12,000 pound winch up front. We have put, and we put these on all our overland vehicles. We put an Anderson connector and we allow the ability to plug the winch in front or rear. Uh, a lot of times in rock crawling, you want to go forward. In overlanding, best way not to get stuck is to back up. And sometimes you get stuck and you want to go backwards. So start of this truck, we've got a 12,000 pound winch, more than enough for this truck. We ru we're running uh, KC Daylighters. So we've got uh, fantastic light, throws out a lot of light, and we even upgraded the headlights in this vehicle. Uh, so it throws great light at night in the afternoons as Kate and I are driving. Uh, we're gonna walk around here. <coughs> we are. As you can see for a 1958 uh, Willys, they didn't come with 35 inch tires. We chose to go to a 35 inch tire the idea here is we can air this tire down and still go over bumps and still do everything, but it's larger, but it's not too large. So we're rolling on 35s, right? Rolling on 35s. These are 35 by 17, so it's a 17-inch wheel with a 35-inch tire. 35 is about as big as we can run, 
We thought about running 33s and do a little smaller, but at the end of the day, 35s fit it really well. If I was to run 37s, when the tire goes up into the wheel well at full travel, the 37 would hit here and here, and this 35 just fits perfectly. So to me, this was as big a tire as we could go without starting to do body trimming and all kinds of work like that. We didn't want to do that. It takes away from the Chief. Uh, we'll walk around the back. Okay, Zeus Off-Road Edition. <laughs> Uh, back of the truck, you can still tell it's 1958. We have the split window and everything. We have, however, upgraded with this. Uh, no, this is rigid, and it is their spare tire swing out. I'm going to move this, swing this out. So this rigid ultra swing will hold a 35-inch tire, obviously. It is mounted directly into our frame, and we've got a cutting board and stand for cooking and things like that. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that makes this truck old school, and you could really, really pinch a finger, is these old bars and it kind of locks in. The other thing is there's no push button like in our modern tremor or any of our But it makes tracks. it all charming. <laughs> it is, but it, it adds to the whole thing. Yeah. Right? This is fun. You get out there, this thing is all real sheet metal. This thing is a 1958 truck. Yep. This is the kind of thing that Ed Abbey would have been out in the desert mm. driving around. That's what I think is so cool. Let me drop this heavy gate. No shocks and struts like in our modern cars or cables. They use straight up metal bars in this thing. Uh, if you want to shoot the inside a little bit, we still have, we have the wood paneling and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, you know, we can talk about some of the other mods that we've made sure. on it, but at the end of the day, this is straight out of 1958, like out of an old cat, you know, hunting catalog. It's fun. You can sit on the tailgate. It holds the weight. Now, we've also modified the interior a little bit, which we'll go into. Uh, I've got some very specific requirements on this. Let's see. One of the things about building an overland vehicle is primary is safety, right? So we have to have reliability, which we're gonna get into in the parts we used on this build. We're gonna talk about safety. Uh, we had a custom roll cage fabricated uh, from the guys at Vessio's Customs. They do really cool work. And this cage, if you look up at the cross bracing and everything, this cage is solid. Like 1958, the truck is cool. It's a great experience to drive. But if we were in an accident or God forbid a rollover, these things just don't have the crash capability built in them stock that a truck that's modern does. So yes, it costs, you know, in this case about $4,000 for a good solid roll cage. Yeah. But your contents are very precious and you got a family with kids and everybody and that's exactly in the truck. It. That's, that's exactly it. And that's why we do it, right? So it's like you're, you know, one way you're like, well, I'm just throwing this money away. But the other way is, God forbid you ever need that kind of thing in an accident or this thing actually rolls. You want to have this cage mm -hmm. in here. This is safety. And that is paramount when you're hauling, well, in our case, our whole family around. Uh, another thing that you can look at from the back here, you can get a quick shot at, is those seats. See those things? That's headrests. 1958, they didn't have headrests. They didn't have lap belts. Matter of fact, they didn't have seat belts in this to begin with. Our roll cage has been fashioned so that we actually have uh, lap belts that have been bolted in. Uh, we have everything bolted into the floor uh, for safety. And so the kids have a full have full seat belts in there. And then of course, grab handles. Uh, are the oh shit handles. They are the oh shit handles. <laughs> If you've watched uh, some of our videos, you know I am the Overland cook of Casey and the Overlanders. This is a piece I love about the Willys wagon. Is and I have not cleaned it since our last trip. We have this cook space, workspace. We also have a cutting board here, so we can do meal prep. We can put a stove up here, and most importantly, thirsty. We have a place to put our beer on and let it rest for a second. I like that. <laughs> uh, another cool thing about the Willys wagon, we have a custom boxed in with the frame, a hitch mount. We've got our seven pin connectors, our backup lights, which are over there, and our D shackles. So these are recovery points. 
Now, something you may notice here, just like on the front, we have an electrical connection. Our winch can be pulled off the front and plugged into the back. And that way we can be winch, we can winch ourselves backwards. Another good way of getting unstuck with that idea of overlanding, of being able to get there and get out. Uh, little things, we ran a full stainless exhaust system. The exhaust exits out the back here. That way we don't have as much noise. It's nice and quiet for the motor that we have in it right now, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, we retained the original stock Willys bumpers that came with the truck. And we're gonna walk around and I'll show you some other things. But uh, one more safety feature. The original lenses, these are the originals. A lot of guys who are driving these on the street, it's a little scary because they're dim by comparison to today, today's autos. So uh, we actually had these custom done with a real high output LEDs. So these are now bright. They're probably five to 10 times as bright as the original stock ones. Nice. And they use less heat. So this is actually nice and less energy, technically. But uh, this way people can tell that we actually are hitting our brakes and we're stopping. <laughs> One of the cool, more modern features that we put on the truck are these sway lock anti-sway bars. These are, you can be locked in for on highway driving and then you can unlock them so that you get the full 16 inches of wheel travel that the TNT Customs long arm kit allows us. Uh, that's fantastic because it has great road manners and drives like a more modern vehicle, but off-road, this thing has incredible suspension articulation. It's just, it's awesome. And what is this thing, honey, this this Fox thing? That's the shock. So we went with Fox shocks, Okay. a nice tuned Fox shock, so that gives us our dampening over bumps. Our springs are about a four inch, roughly a four inch lift. That was kind of a thing that we actually had to play with a couple times. We had to swap springs in and out because of the weight of the vehicle. It was kind of hard to kind of fit those things in. Uh, up front, as you look through, we have, we have an air conditioning cooler. We got air conditioning. We have a transmission cooler that's underneath here. And then we have the radiator behind it. Uh, I'm gonna open this up. Let's talk about it. These original trucks came with a, a little four-cylinder motor. I think it was called the Super Hurricane, uh, developing somewhere around uh, 60 horsepower, 64 horsepower at the time. Somebody will correct me on, on that online, but roughly that. Uh, they were not known for being fast trucks, right? These things had a top speed of about 40 miles an hour. That didn't really work for the kind of driving we're doing because we wanted to be able to drive this on the highway and yet get off-road and have all the advantages of basically a motor that had more torque and everything else. So what we did with this truck, this is a GM LS3 LC9 motor. This is basically a, a truck motor out of, uh, well, about a 2010 Silverado. And we bought ours as a crate motor, brand new, and, and put it in this. There's a lot of other cool things, uh, upgrades. Ooh, like what's see. this? Fancy little ARB blue thing. Ooh, that is our air compressor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that air compressor allows us to air up our tires. It allows us to uh, run air and inflate the tires on our trailers, things like that. When you're off-road, you air down. This way it allows us to air up. I could also run air tools off of it and things like that. Uh, but essentially... We have power brakes. These trucks never have power brakes, so we've now been upgraded to power brakes. We're running an Odyssey red top battery. So that is a great battery for overlanding. And there is no washer fluid in here, <laughs> which we've learned on a so couple for of any of you, So for any of you who saw our video on the North Rim, we were constantly getting out with a, a rag, a towel, a t-shirt, and wiping the front windows. Which off. is something to think about if you do have one of these old vehicles, is to bring an old rag and some Windex for your windshields because there's there's no washer fluid at all. <laughs> so no, if you no want to see, you have no. to be a little more prepared. Yeah, and, and the, frankly, the, uh, the, <laughs> the power windshield wipers aren't very power, but again, it kind of lends to what people would have been doing back in the 50s, right? Charming. Yeah, but Can't. we're doing it with, with, you know, with a 400 horsepower. Okay, what's, uh, what's this thing? This big, this? yeah. <laughs> this is our, this is our K&N air, air filter. Okay. So we're running basically a pre-filter over it and then an air filter 
Okay. Underneath. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason for the pre-filter was when we were out on that North Rim trip, it was so dusty, as you recall, that we wanted the dust to kind of get caught in this in this uh, light mesh of the pre-filter sure. before it got into those actual fins of the actual air filter. Uh, this is basically a modern a modern Silverado motor, a modern Chevy motor, uh, with a big with a big four core radiator and a power fan. So Chevy motor. Uh -huh. On a Jeep chassis? Yeah. In a 1958 Willys wagon. Basically. All right. But the idea was reliability. Yeah. The idea of this truck is that we can go to any town in the United States. We can diagnose this with codes. We can get parts for this motor. It's fantastic. I mean, the LS motor series that Chevy is doing are great motors. I debated going to, you know, a Dodge you know, Chrysler motor, whatnot. But at the end of the day, the LS is just easy to work on. And we talked about with this truck, one of the things was we wanted to be able to get parts anywhere we mm -hmm. went. Mm -hmm. So 1958, it's a little harder to get those little parts. Yeah, so instead this, of being stuck for a day or two, you're stuck for <laughs> yeah. and a very this, long time. Yeah, this thing goes. Too. I mean, I never, we don't have to step on it. When you step on it, it's exciting. It's cool. really fun to drive. Uh, I kind of mentioned already 35 inch tires. I mentioned that we had a you know custom spring pack in it and everything else. You know, power steering, power brakes, disc brakes, front and rear. And here's that sway lock. I love these sway locks. So ah, right see now, how that works. So this sway lock, right now it's locked in and our anti-sway bar is locked. If we're to go off-roading, we just simply take this and flip it over. And now the sway bar is unlocked. We can drive off road. We get the suspension articulation between the front wheels and the body. And then when we get back on road, we can flip it back over. We also have one of these on the back. Due to the weight of this vehicle, it handled a little bit wonky. We decided just to go to the sway locks front and rear. So we have sway bars front and rear. Super excited we did it. It cost a little bit more to do it, but the added safety when we're on the highway, this truck drives like a modern truck it's fantastic extra fuel cans extra fuel cans we're running an additional five gallons of fuel on either side that's an additional 10 gallons of fuel maybe we should get underneath at some point and take a look at the fuel tank because the other awesome upgrade that we did this truck has a 32 gallon fuel tank it's roughly double what a traditional jeep would have this gives us our, our mileage and kate as you know from being out on the north rim yeah a lot of the guys with jeeps are getting close so as far as the fuel levels, we were just cruising along. We still had a half tank left. Yep, them, so after a few days, yeah. Yeah. Uh, ideally, I would love to take this truck down to Baja where fuel is really scarce. And between the 10 gallons here, the 32 there, brings us up to 42 gallons. That should get us around Baja for camping. So, so now we are in the interior of the Willys wagon, which I will have to say, when we took this out on the North Rim for an entire week, it was extremely comfortable. Um, the seats are nice. There's the oh shit bars and oh shit handles, which are lovely. We did have air conditioning, which was pretty cool. Um, we have some like power outlets to charge your phones everything. and all those things. Um, so it was really, really comfortable from my perspective. So... To add into what Kate was saying, uh, for me, one of the appeals of this vehicle is that feeling that I'm out there. It's in the 1950s. So a lot of these national parks aren't national parks yet. Things like that. It's sort of that rustic era. If you take a look, we, we took great care to keep the dash as stock as possible. There are a couple gauges have been added in there. And if you take a close look at that center gauge, uh, and I actually have the original over here. And this is the original? This is the original speedometer <laughs> and the original gauge that came out of this truck. This truck had 39,000 miles on it. It she had, had temp fuel and obviously just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What we've replaced it with is a much more modern circular gauge cluster. Has, has all of that, plus it has uh, 
uh, digital readouts as well. It was just a really nice upgrade to do, but as Kate has shown you and you back up, the truck still has a 1958 feel. Uh, we also worked real hard to find a steering wheel and steering column that was very reminiscent of a 1958. However, a little more modern and a little safer than the original uh, steering shaft, which I'd be worried about in an accident. So this still with that wooden wheel gives you that hands-on feel of an old truck. So Dan and I have a babysitter right now and we decided we'd just hang out in the truck, talk, have some alone time <laughs> and show you a little bit of the interior too. A lot of these trucks came with originally with a split bench seat, meaning that it was a short bench. This part flipped forward to let people into the back seat. Uh, we've obviously done a lot of upgrades to this truck. These seats are out of a Cadillac CTS. They are I didn't know seats. they were seats from a Caddy. These are seats from a Caddy. Nice, Check Dad. Power yeah, seats. and they're, they're power seats, which is lovely. Yeah. Wow, fancy. And, and really nice because uh, I've got enough room, leg room. We were in this for about 10 hours a day. And you're a big man. There you go. <laughs> you have enough room. It's comfortable. So... Um, other things to note about the inside, oh, actually, about these seats. So they're Cadillac seats. The reason I like them is they have the headrests. Sorry, but in, a, in an accident, if you're rear-ended, headrests are about the most important yeah. safety feature you can possibly have. And coming from somebody who's got a whole bunch of titanium in his back, it's kind of nice to have that kind of safety feature too. They've got the shoulder belts and the straps. As you can see, I do. we have a full cage that wraps around all of the occupants in the vehicle. Uh, nice modern feature. <laughs> so what's super cool about this truck? <laughs> Take a look down here at these three sticks down here, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, look at those sticks. Yeah. Okay, so we also upgraded when we did the motor. We did the transmission. So this has a 4L65E transmission in it. Uh, great transmission. We have a really stout torque converter in it, which gets the power from the motor to the transmission. But from the transmission back, we have the transfer case. These three, this is an Atlas transfer case. Uh, I believe it's a 3.8 to one uh, transfer case. Basically, I have four high and low here. I have the front and I can choose high or low here and the rear high or low. So right now we're running four, uh, we're running in high and high. I can go, I can basically, I have in this truck four different four wheel drive low ranges. I have traditional high, I have low, I have lower, and I have lowest. And that lowest is great for rock crawling. It's awesome. Uh, other little features we have in it, we do have right here. Backup camera. Backup camera, yeah. which is really nice to have, mm -hmm. frankly, in these old vehicles. Uh, we've got the headlights. We've got options for our driving lights, our KC lights. We also our... um, replaced the windshield. Oh, yeah, good point. So we did replace the windshield. Uh, we went with no seam in the middle with the, the old bar that was in the split window. And we just seamed it with a clear seam. It gives us a little bit better visibility. Uh, obviously, you can see we have the cage kind of, you know, close. I have a phone mount here, mm -hmm. um, which is where I, I run my phone. A modern, a modern uh, stereo system in it. High fidelity. And... Really cool stuff. We have our shortwave radio there. So if we get into trouble, we can push out emergency signals if we're not in cell, um, near cell area. We can communicate with our shortwave radio. And then this, this is the shortwave radio. little thing in the middle, which is nice. It locks this right here. Not the beer, but that. <laughs> <laughs> Locking security. It lights up on the inside. Has a cup holder. A cup holder. Something you didn't have in 1958, a cup holder. We have one, it's very valuable. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's really fun, but our ARB switch is here. We still have room for a couple of additional add-ons here. Our lockers are you know, up here for the front locker, but uh, this truck is fantastic. Let me turn this off. Uh, if you wanna jump in the back and show how much leg room there is in this. I'm in the back of our Willy's wagon. As you can see, there is actually tons of room back here. Um, we have this nice 
bench seat. It has um, adjustable headrests, which are very important. Dan's always big on safety. We also have seat belts. So seat belts for the passengers, seat belts uh, for car seats and things like that. Another thing that I love, um, we have little USB ports right here. Anyone that has kids. Um, one of the great things about technology is you can put them in the back seat with their iPads and they're quiet and you don't have to hear from them. So that's great. Um, the roll cage, the little handlebars are here. Um, the interior I think is beautiful. We kept it very natural and typical to what it looked like back in 1958. But super comfortable back here. A lot of subtle upgrades with the seating, yeah. with that headliner being really nice. Mm -hmm. And again, we ran power for both front, uh, both sides, left and right, for dual USBs. Uh, you can see maybe the six by nine speakers by Kate. But if you sit, Kate, if you swing your legs perfectly, like you're actually sitting in it, or you can just do it that way. Just hang it out. <laughs> it's wide enough. I was thinking if you if you put your feet the other way, you can show how much true legroom is in this There's truck. Tons of room. So, but yeah. Tons of room in the wheelies. Um, these nice fancy Cadillac seats have pockets too. If yep. you're traveling with kids or another couple or whatever, it's nice for you to have a place to put your stuff. Yeah, I mean, for a full-size adult, you can sit in the back. It's yeah. pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, let's see if we can see those roll cages. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, that's hard to see. There you go. It's the roll cage to protect your head and everything. We have the cage over you. Another thing, feature I love about the Willys custom that we did here is this little step here. Super easy to get in. <laughs> hey. So we're gonna go underneath the truck right now. Um, with some dogs, maybe. All right, hold you out. <laughs> Dan and I have successfully made it underneath the truck. We've encountered a few licks, a few hugs from the puppers. But here we go. <laughs> All right. So thing I wanted to point out underneath here is if you take a look at these skid plates and these links here and here and there, this is that TNT Customs long, long arm kit. It makes an amazing difference in the ride. So now the truck has more travel and it rides better on the road. So amazing. Thank you, TNT Customs. Super happy with how this has handled everything. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice in here is that our transfer case has been slightly clocked, meaning that it's been turned. So when you look underneath this vehicle, you basically have the front pumpkin there, that's the front axle. You have the back one behind Kate. And underneath this thing, it is flat all the way across. So this thing can really, really fjord um, or go over rocks really well. So nothing hangs down basically. Uh, Kate's probably filming right there, the stainless steel exhaust. Mm -hmm. Really cool stuff. We obviously had these, also these uh, custom, uh, these custom side steps put in. Now the cool thing about these side steps, they do hang down, right? However, if you are off road, you can take these pins out and you can pull the side step out. So if we're re wheeling, we have really these on our Overland trailer too that they pop out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're removable. That's same yeah. same concept. This way you don't have things that can hang you up on that breakover angle. <laughs> Getting licked. <laughs> hang it out underneath the truck now with the dog. <laughs> Uh, little axle things. Tell me about this front axle, honey. All right, super excited. So, <laughs> front axle is a Dynatrack Pro Rock 44. Uh, inside there, we have 456 gears and we have an Eaton electronic locking uh, differential. So, we have a front locker in the rear, which, if you can. Now we are in the. The back end of the truck. Back end of the truck. The rear axle. The rear axle. So you can see these long arm kits going all the way down. But if you look at that axle there, that is a Ford 88. It's a place where you're able to save a little bit of money on that rear axle. A very, very stout axle. We are running uh, an Eaton True Track limited slip differential. 
super techy and cool because it has worm gear in it uh, that allow it to really lock in um, or really give you that true limited slip feeling on it. If anybody wants to look up Eaton True Track differentials, I highly recommend them. Uh, they're fantastic, great for overlanding, and you don't have to have your axle completely locked. It still allows a little bit of uh, motion with it. Okay. In conclusion, of the 1958 <laughs> Willie's Wagon. And please subscribe to our channel. We'll keep making videos that you asked for if you subscribe. Yeah, you gotta subscribe to that button, I think, down. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> down there. Yeah, uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for taking the time. Uh, I know we didn't use a lot of super technical terms uh, that we could have, and I could have totally geeked out, but we just wanted to do a sort of a fun video to give you an idea. And if you have questions, leave us a comment. Um, yeah, Dan we'll will probably have to answer those ones. <laughs> probably. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to our channel, check out our other videos, and did I mention subscribe? Ooh, yeah, check subscribe. out the uh, North Room video too if you wanna see the, the Willies in action. <laughs>